What's up guys, we're back with another NECA TMNT review taking a look at the latest Loot Crate figure. So we had the Mirage Comic Shredder from the first Loot Crate, well of this most recent wave of Loot Crates, and then the second of the three is the Arcade set. So we're taking a look today at the Shell Shock Turtle, which is of course a very weird figure in a number of ways. So we're getting a very specific version of a turtle as he's being electrocuted in the video game. It doesn't get much more specific than that, but this is a 100% glow-in-the-dark figure. So, you've got me right there. We've got this guy in the uh, standard style box for the arcade line. So it's got the big window and then you've got the purple motif with all of those goofy uh, Ninja Turtle suits that lined the actual arcade cabinets back in the day. And then you've got some arcade screenshots that run around the packaging. And then the back of the box has got a few product shots with him and Shredder and a foot soldier and then a big shot of the turtle being shocked. So good presentation, consistent with the rest of the line. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to take a look at this guy. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our shell-shocked turtle. So this guy is uh, kind of nightmarish, honestly, in some ways, because it's so weird looking on its own. The big thing for this figure is undoubtedly the fact that it is glow in the dark. And that's what most folks I'm sure are interested in seeing and doing when they actually have this figure. I know that's what I wanted him for, just because it's a weird looking figure on its own, but when it glows, it really glows. So we will talk about that, but let's see what this guy can do first, see how he moves around, because it is very much the same figure that we're used to seeing in the Tune or the Arcade line, but there are a few little differences here. Nothing too crazy. So we've got a head that can look up a little bit. Not much. He can look not much down either. You have a rotating tongue inside this mouth. So there's this tongue right there. You can see it a little bit more clearly. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it can rotate. And then you can uh, you can swivel the head a little bit side to side. Of course, this humongous crazy mouth, you can't go too far. The uh, bandana on the back is also pegged into the head. So it's got a little bit of wiggle. It's not necessarily articulation that, uh, that I can tell, but it does move if you want to do that. The arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate all the way around. You've got your bicep swivel single jointed rotating elbow and then we've got uh, hinges and rotation at the wrist so pretty normal there we've got the little bit of wiggle inside the shell and this, these guys don't have belts or this guy i should say doesn't have a belt so you can more more cleanly see the cut there so it does move a little bit granted it's never moved too much just because of the design uh, and then you can kick the legs out to the side they kick forward all the way of course they are connected so if you move one the other one might follow with it they go backwards a little bit. You can cut at the uh, the peg up there, so there's a bit of a thigh cut. You've also got your double jointed knees, and then we've got our ball pegs down at the ankles. So a little bit forward and backward, a little bit side to side, and then rotation. So they aren't they aren't super super articulated. I mean, they're very much par for the course when it comes to the tune, the arcade line. the The only real differences here are the fact that you have a different head with just a larger size, so it's a little bit more limited. And then you've got those two little things, the bandana and the tongue, that can move because of how they're pegged into that head. But of course, the big thing here is the look, the overall design, the weirdness, the wackiness, and then the glow-in-the-dark uh, aspect of this figure. Now, as far as the figure itself goes, again, like I said, this is mostly a reuse type of situation. The only thing that's really, really different here that's going to stand out initially is the, uh, is the head, because it is so crazy. I mean, it's... It's kind of freaky looking, honestly. It's very weird, uh, taken out of context of the game. But the figure itself is the same kind of thing that we're used to seeing from the tune, from the arcade line. So if you're, if you're familiar with those, then you will know what's going on here. Sculpt is still really good. Shell looks fantastic in uh, clear glow-in-the-dark plastic. Very happy with that. The paint applications for all of the uh, the skeleton aspect underneath is pretty well done because that's kind of what this is mimicking, you know, a rib cage. And then you've got more pixelated black that runs on the arms and then down on the legs. You do have your uh, your arm pads, your elbow pads, your wrist pads, and then your knee pads, which are done up in black this time around. And this turtle is not specifically any turtle. And I'd mentioned it in uh, the articulation segment. There are no belts, but you can actually see where the belts would peg in. So there is a filled in piece here this time around. So you've got a little section here in the front of the shell and then a little section in the back of the shell uh, that was filled in to allow this to be a, you know, a seamless looking figure for the most part. Now that I've seen it though, it's hard for me to not notice it. I'm not sure it really comes in on camera. We'll see if I can get some close-ups on that. But it is a, it is a pretty solid looking figure. Again, it's just a, uh, 
It's just a what you see is what you get. Clear, translucent, glow-in-the-dark plastic with a lot of black accents that are pretty well applied. The big change is, of course, the head sculpt because it's, I mean, it's ridiculous when you think about it. It's this mouth that has been stretched bigger than the head itself because he's screaming so loud. You've got these big wonky eyeballs up here, these big eyes that are just blacked out now. And then you've got this huge mouth with teeth in them. So there's teeth sculpted up here on the top and the bottom. And then, of course, you've got the tongue. So as, as absurd and weird as it is, I do think that it looks really good. I was honestly kind of concerned about how it was going to look until I got it in person. And once it was in hand, it makes a lot more sense. It's it's a lot more easy to understand exactly how you're going to display this and what it actually looks like. Because it's, it's a weird looking head sculpt. There's no denying that. But I think NECA did a really good job with it. But what we all want to see is, of course, the glow-in-the-dark feature, because that's what this figure is all about. He is all glow-in-the-dark plastic, outside of the fact that it does have some black accents at the mouth, the eyes, and then all of the bone and pixelated paint job. But this figure is all glow-in-the-dark, and he has a tremendous, tremendous shine. Really nothing that I would complain about, nothing that I would change uh, in this regard. And in, in this area specifically, that's where this figure well, shines, no pun intended, because it sells the idea of what this thing is. Without the glow, he looks super, super weird. And it, it looks fine. Obviously, it sells the idea of what this figure is perfectly. But when he glows, it's that much more impressive. It's that much cooler because it looks like he is radiating light from being shocked. So it works. It sells the idea. And it's just a super, super bright glow. Hit him with black light, charge him up in some sunlight. And this thing just absolutely shines like a beacon. So they did a fantastic job when it comes to the glow-in-the-dark feature here. Now, as far as accessories goes, there's not a great deal to talk about when it comes to this figure on its own because he only comes with two uh, accessories. Again, this is not a specific turtle. This is a turtle being shocked. So it is a figure that just comes with some gripping hands. So you get the standard gripping hands that come with the turtles. Uh, so you've got the flat palm hands here, and then you've got the gripping hands. So you can swap those out again. Uh, also glow-in-the-dark plastic, just like the rest of the figure. But I did want to talk about one of the other items that is included with the loot crate. I'm not going to go through everything here because it's not not mostly toy related. The shirt is really cool, but the one thing that this guy comes with that I wasn't really sure if this was ever even advertised or not. So if you want to, you know, avert some spoilers, maybe skip ahead a little bit. But we've got this guy here. We have got a, a TV screen for the turtles. And this, of course, is an homage to the game. It's got a lenticular uh, in there, so it has the uh, April at the Statue of Liberty screen, and it's also got the Shredder. This, I believe, is reused from the uh, probably the Nightmare on Elm Street set, I would imagine. Uh, I think this is probably also the one they made for the Toys That Made Us Blu-ray set. But this thing is awesome. Honestly, this makes this set so, so much more valuable to me because this is a really cool accessory. Uh, it's awesome for folks who need something like this, you know, for uh, ACBA or diorama settings or anything like that. I frankly don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it looks so awesome. And it's a nice little bonus. When I found out that this was in there, I was super, super excited. Uh, it does have a... Uh, uh, clip on the back so you can uh, you can mount it on the wall or on a dial or something if you need to uh, but it's really fantastic sculpt is great and it definitely has that vintage vintage uh, tv look and feel and i love the lenticular so you've got some actual accessories for the turtle itself just some hands but this is really where it's at when it comes to toy related accessories this is awesome so yeah, there's really nothing to complain about with this figure. Honestly, I was a bit concerned that I wasn't really going to like this one at first because it is such a goofy, specific design. But once I got it in hand, I was I was really over the moon with it because of the glow. The glow is so good, and it is it is just the kind of goofy thing that I really do like. I do suspect that we're going to see this head again because while this is a very specific thing for the shocking turtle, it's also exactly what the turtles do when they hurt their toe in the game. So they run around jumping saying, my toe, my toe. And and uh, this is exactly the same kind of head sculpt. So I wonder if we're going to see this again fully painted. And honestly, I would definitely be down for that, as goofy as that also is. But as far as this figure itself goes, great glow, great paint application, same solid sculpt that we expect to see. And for the Loot Crate bonus, you get that TV screen and all the other stuff, too. It's a really solid set. Uh, again, a lot of fun here for sure. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Loot Crate exclusive Shell Shock Turtle. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time. 